Hosea chapter 5. <clears throat> now it's very careful that you read the scriptures. Many times the scriptures will tell you exactly the subject. Now the subjects of the Bible are the, the Israel, Jews, the Hebrew people. Then there's the world. Then there are Christians. Then it's written to Hebrews and Christians. Then it's written to Hebrew Christians. <laughs> Hear ye this, O priests. Alright, so Hosea 5 starts off talking to the priests. Well, who's the priest? The Catholic Church? No. There's no Catholic Church here. Now, there's a Catholic Church practice. We saw that, the false priest. Now, that's going to come into play. In the study we did, I think, between three and four, about the, the Catholic Church being before Jesus. O priests and hearken, O house of Israel, that's north. Now, we're going to see in a moment, we're not really talking about the Levite priests. Though there are Levite priests in Israel, they've been overrun by another class of priests. Remember that study? You say, well, Stalin, why did we do that? Well, now here we go. Israel has priests, but they don't have the Levitical priests. They're down in Judah. And give ye ear, O house of the king. For judgment is toward you. Alright, Israel, God speaking, you're in deep trouble. And you're free. Because ye have been a snare on Mizpah. And you spread upon Tabar, the priest have set traps. The snare is a trap to trap the people. The Catholic Church does that. If you're not a member and dedicated to the Catholic Church and you don't get married to a Catholic, you you know, you get married. My mom and dad, my dad wasn't Catholic. They were married outside the altar. My grandpa who got saved, born again by the blood of Jesus Christ, Catholic. You know, if you're not married in the Catholic cemetery, you're anaphanated. You're, you're abomination. If you don't go hear the priest and the confessioner, you put these these traps on the people and their their faults. They're damnationable. That's the word. And the revolters are profound to make slaughter, killing. That's what religion does, any religion. They kill. The, the difference, and you know what, I'm going to step away from the Baptist church, because the Baptist church is just bad today. The Christian is the only one that serves a God that died and shed his blood. Now, I don't know about the Jehovah Witnesses, but I know the Mormons shed blood from their trail all the way to Utah. I know Mr. Smith was put into jail for having other man's husband, wives. Islam will behead you if you don't follow Allah. And, and don't go with the Islam that's in America. That's not Islam. Oh, well, we're a bunch of people. And we, no. If this nation is ever taken over by Islam, the first ones they will dedicate themselves will be to the Islam. And they'll be the one to be penalized for not serving Allah properly. Allah is not a peaceful God by their writings. You either serve Allah or you're scum, you're a servant, you're dead. The congregational church has its ties and shedding blood. The separatists. You say, what's the separatist? Why don't you know that? 
in church history. The Catholic Church, Fox's Book of Monitors, Monitors Mirror has blood of Christians. Queen Mary of Scots, Bloody Mary, killing Christians. Russia, Chinese, Korea, killing Christians. Though I have been a rebuker of them all, God said, listen, everything you're doing, I rebuke it. I send preachers. I send prophets. I tell you, you're doing wrong. You know one of the things that God sent me to do? I'm here to tell you you're doing wrong. And a lot of people say, oh, I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, I like doing it and all that. Well, <laughs> you're just like Israel, just like Judah. You don't want to listen. But you've been told. And when I tell you with, with history and Bible and, and document it all, where you can hear it and you, you can see my notes, a lot of those messages I do about the Bible and I do about, about Easter and I do about, you know, all that, I will, if, if, if it's on paper, I will put that paper on my download page. You can download it. You're going to print it out, not me. And usually at the end of those things, you'll see my references. I know Ephraim, and Ephraim has been a bad boy in Hosea. And the Mormons believe they are of Ephraim. So if you are surrounded by Mormons, and I haven't really been involved with Mormon people, but if you are, and you can get them to say, yeah, you know, I'm of Ephraim, study and highlight Hosea. Because Jose will point to you, hey, if you believe Ephraim, and Israel is not hid from my from me. Now Ephraim is associated with Israel. For now, O Ephraim, thou committest whoredom. <laughs> Put that on your Mormon friends. And Israel's defiled. Now we talked about that whoredom over and over, five chapters. Not only sexuality, it's the relationship to gods and idols and imagery. They will not frame their doings to turn to their God. Their main focus, you know, when you see a frame, the, the main focus of that frame is that item is put in there. I mean, you put a picture, you put a, 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 a diploma, you put a certificate, you put something in that frame. And that's to call you to attention. And what you're to do is, and I'm not talking about idol and imagery, but you're to put God a frame in your life, and that's what you're supposed to be looking at. For the spirit of whoredoms. <laughs> Look at that spirit. Did you know there was a spirit of boredom? And what we're talking about is we're talking about a, a sexual, yes. We're talking about a idol, imagery, and God. Excuse my allergies. Did you know there's other spirits out there? I'll give you another one because the apostle John tells us in 2 John and 3 John, I forget which one, or first, we're to try the spirit. Okay? How about when they say the Christmas spirit? Now a lot of people think, okay, so as soon as I say Christmas, you know, that's holy, that's right. Is it? A big fat man that breaks into your house and leaves stuff underneath a tree called gifts, eating your cookies and ice cream, and he knows everything you're doing. He, read, he wears red, smokes a pipe, and he defies gravity with nine reindeer. And he knows everybody's name. And it sounds like God to me. He has no beginning. He has no end. He tells everyone to be good, but never does Santa Claus say, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And I can even find you figurines. If you do a, a Google search, you do a search on eBay, you can find a figurine of, of the image of Santa Claus bowing down in a baby in a... Uh, manger. Well, where are you going to find that in the Bible? 
Well, the shepherds came and adored the baby, and there was Santa Claus. No. It's this evil, wicked spirit. They have not known the Lord. In the midst of them, you know what's supposed to be in the midst of the nation of Israel, both Jerusalem and that temple. Now, I wonder, and I don't know if anybody's ever done it, if you can give me the information, you know, comment about it. Has anybody ever laid out the land of Israel to see maybe that if that temple was actually the center of Israel? That'd be interesting. Because God was supposed to be the center of their lives. The pride of Israel. That pride is a sin. I heard the other day a man say, you know, some pride is good. You want to give me chapter and verse? You know why he said that? Because he's got pride and he's covering up his sin. America's got pride. We're going to cover up the sins of America. You see, you know, you say, well, a little white lie. So, I mean, you can tell this lie, but you can't tell that lie. Put no difference. That's wrong. Do testify to its face. America's got pride, and you know what? Right in her face. The things that she legalized. We're legalizing marijuana. We're legalizing abortion. We legalize alcohol. We legalize tobacco. And that stands to your face to say, that's okay. No, it doesn't. How come, and listen, all this nonsense right now, Texas and all that, you know, you know they're, they're like writing laws, you know, you, you can't have abortion, blah, blah, blah. When the, AC, when the ACU and all those countries, I mean, all those agencies, and everybody gets together, there was a time people said, you know, marijuana would never be legalized. Well, it got legalized. Yeah. <laughs> They may make it right right now, but you know what? There were kings in Judah that did right in between two kings that did evil. And the end result of Judah was the last kings were wicked. They had good kings. We may get some, hey, we got some good laws now. But it ain't going to last. See, you got your faith and trust in God. I got my, I mean, the, the people and nations and Republicans and Democrats. I got my faith and trust in God. And God told me it's going to get worse. God told me it's going to get evil. And the times of wicked are coming. There's coming a great apostasy. It ain't going to get better. And when you say, well, if we get Republicans and everything will be great, make America great again, you are post-tribulation. -tribula and what's post-tribulation is, you're going to make everything better. Catholic Church believes this. The Mormons believe this. The Jehovah Witnesses believe this. Russia believes this. Communism believes this. And America and the Republican, you know, we can get this perfect America and this perfect government. And then, we're, you know, everything's going to be great. Everybody's going to carry a gun. Everybody's going to carry a Bible. They're going to have a flag over their shoulders. And Jesus Christ is going to come back and pat us all on the back. And down south, you'll have your coon dog and you'll have your rocking chair in heaven, sipping on uh, moonshine. Friend, that ain't so. Therefore shall Israel and Ephraim fall in their iniquity. America is going to fall. Because if Israel and Ephraim fell, and if Judah fell, we're going to fall for our sin. You, you can't be a sinful nation. We are, because all have sinned. There's going to come time that, that the Sodomites, they're running free. There are people now that they're, they're trying to get legalization. I don't know what sex I am. We're already allowing sodomites to marry males and males and females and females, and we're giving them health care, we're giving them rights, and 
If we continue to let America and England do that, then one day God's going to call all the people of Sodom and Gomorrah and the neighboring na nations. He's got to call them up and say, listen, I'm very sorry I did what I did. Because if I burnt your cities with, with fire and brimstone and I let America go, You say, well, you know, America's not as bad. You know, they were pounding on the door to get to those men, the angels that came in lots of Listen, you are getting babies and children who are being robbed, being kidnapped, being taken. And they're finding out that many of those cases, they're being sodomized. They're being, they're being sexually abused. It was a time a couple of years ago, it just had this big... Frenzy is probably still going on. They were finding these women locked up in basements of these people's houses and they were sexually abused and sexually tortured. There's actually going around today, and it's no, it's quiet, and I wonder why it's quiet, but there's a thing called child trafficking, and that's also involved in sex. They are actually selling children for sex. There's the spirit of whoredom. I thank God. Oh, we haven't been on, on the road much traveling through uh, Daytona and everything, you know, with my health. And We passed by the other day. There was a place that made concrete statues and Mary and, and, and uh, uh, Pan and all that. That place is completely shut down and gone. Hallelujah. But that's only one of quite many. I celebrate when I see a bar or a, or, or a tavern shut down, hallelujah. But well, that's one of many. If there's anything about America, you know, say, you know, pray and revival in America, it's not going to happen. Why? The churches are not right. You can't celebrate the devil and love the devil and smooch with the devil. Revelation 3, and expect God to bless you. While you're thinking, what I'm doing in the church service is perfectly proper, and people like Stiley Hayward comes up and gives you the church, and you ignore it. Welcome to the time of Jeremiah. Welcome to the time of Elijah. Welcome to the time of Ezekiel. Welcome to the time of Isaiah. Welcome to the time of Jesus. Welcome to the time of the Apostle Paul. The, the Apostle Paul, oh, ha, have I become your enemy because I spoke you the truth? That was spoken to Christians. And when Paul tells you the perils of shipwrecks and the perils of, of not having food, the perils of naked, and he says the perils of Christians. And if we got it today in the church, you, you, you're not going to get a revival. And Judah also shall fall with them. That happens much later on. You see, Judah has been married into the religion of Israel. Like the church has been married into the Catholic. That's why I say Baptist Catholic. There's so, there are many Catholics, you're stupid. You're stupid. If you can think that Jesus died on Friday, Good Friday, and on Easter three days and three nights, you, you are stupid. And the Florida governor should shut you up because your math is wrong. How come the Florida governor say, listen, we're not having these math books in Florida. We are not teaching this in Florida. And yet the Baptists say, the Baptists say, never mind the Catholic Church, the Baptists say, I know one person right now, oh, you know, Jesus died on Good Friday and he rose Easter and, you know, Resurrection Sunday. Jesus said three days and three nights. Don't become a cashier. Because you don't know how to count. They shall go with their flocks, with their herds to seek the Lord. Okay? We're going to get God. We're going to go to a Baptist church. We're going to get God. 
We're going to go down to Baptist Church down south to Lucia and go in there in an old Jehovah Witness building. Ah, and we're going to seek God. King James. But not the doctrines. Not when you get a man that gets up in the pulpit Sunday morning and he teaches you the philosophies of men. And i got to get up and correct them. And then you get another man that gets up there. He teaches a, a false doctrine. And the pastor comes over to my house. We talk it out. And he gives me no scripture. I give him scripture. Where he's wrong. And he walks out of my house still believing the heresy. The heresy and the junk. And that man is still allowed to get in the Sunday school bathroom. And, and you know, I'm wrong. Okay. You know, you're, you're a hypocrite because you have shown me no love. Where's your love for me when I'm trying to correct you? Or do I have to say to you, have I become your enemy, Mr. Lover? Because I've told you the truth. And all they that live godly shall suffer persecution. That's why you let many of your Baptists and your, your Christians don't do nothing. They don't want the hatred of their family because they want that that family reunion. They want the people to come to two times a year. Because that's bragging on how many people we filled seats. That, oh, the, look how much the offering played. Friend, if you went by the two times they came a, a, a year, people, you wouldn't be able to pay your bills. And yet you forget the person that sits in that pew and is faithful to God. So they're going after God, but they shall not find him. He has withdrawn himself from them. Look at that. We're, go we're going to get the Lord Jehovah, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. God said, playing hide and conceit, you can't find me. You say, well, how can you get that in the church? Where is Jesus in the church age according to Revelation 3? He's behind a closed door with no handle. He's the one knocking. You're in the church. Well, we're going to search God. We're going to get God. We got all our things. I'm trying not to say Easter. You think you found God in what you're doing. But God's not involved in it. I think a lot of these children ministries, whatever the name is, I think a lot of children are going to end up in hell. But what I did, I got a Tootsie Roll. When I get, I got a ribbon. What I got, I got applause. What I did, I got this. But what you didn't get was you didn't get the true salvation. God's not in it. If you don't preach, the, there are people out there, uh, they're on the street ministry and they got signs of abortion and all that. Now, abortion is wrong and abortion is murder, but that is not the gospel Jesus said to preach. If you're going to stand outside an abortion clinic, the thing I would do is <clears throat> I'd preach the gospel. Oh, you can save that baby from the, from the mother's womb, all right, and then have the mother die and go to hell. Well, I saved my baby. I didn't get the abortion. But they didn't tell me about being saved by Jesus Christ. They didn't tell me the gospel. We got things all messed up today. You know, God is love and God is wonderful. Here God says, you know what? I'm hiding myself from you. You're in trouble. You realize even today, 2022, there are a person, there may be a, a, a couple, there may be a family, there may be a church, maybe a town, maybe a city, maybe a state, maybe a country. They're there and they're like, you know what, okay, let's tr turn to God. He's like, uh -huh. you can't find me. But God is love. <laughs> 
You forgot that love is past tense for the lost me. It, you it may have gone so far that I say, no, hey, no. They have dwelt, yeah, they have dwelt treacherously against the Lord. If a man over and over and over and over and over and over and yells at God, screams at God, cusses God, <coughs> denies God, makes fun of God, maybe even purposely sins in some ways or many ways or always just to aggravate God. That man goes to the doctor's office and he finds out it's terminal. There's no remedy. There's no, you're going to die. And that man turns to God and God's like, hey, you had your chance. A man, a man's about to walk in front of a, of a not a speeding bus, but a bus going full speed down the road. This man's about to walk in front. And the guy pushes his son to push the other man out of the road and the son gets hit by the bus and dies. The son became the, the, the substitutory atonement for that man. That man gets up, wipes off the, the road dust off his leg, looks at what happens, looks at the, the, the father of that son and says, ha! I could have got out of that. I didn't need you. I didn't need your son. That's an idiot. Look at that idiot sitting there dead in front of that bus. You think God's going to show you love? God's long-suffering. But God's a judge. And somebody with that attitude, you know what? God knows. God will send everybody and anybody a witness. But God knows, listen, your heart may be just so hard. Where they have begotten strange children. Now, that's not, you know, a, a hand coming out of the belly button and, you know, ears and, and the butt and all that. Strange children is, well, this is the time when Jesus. I'm trying to think of the name right now. I can't think of the name. Samaritan. Samaritans were half Jew and half. Gentile children. Ezra and Nehemiah had a problem with that. The law for the Jew for a bed, hey, listen, a, a person of Judah could not marry into Issachar. A child of Dan could not marry into Asher. They have overstepped their bones and bounds, and here's a Hebrew marrying an Egyptian, a Assyrian, a Babylonian or whoever in. You know what they're saying today? You know what the commercials are today? Thank God I was in the hospital this weekend. I didn't turn that TV on once. But you know what you know what they have? They have commercials now with a white person as a spouse and a colored person as a spouse. Trying to promote you know, everybody get together. They have sodomites as a family now. And they have a child. Uh, sodomites can't have children. You know, if you put people on three islands, four islands, one you got a white man and a black woman, and one island you got a white man and a white woman, and I, you got a man and a man, you got a, and then on the other one, you got a woman and a woman. All right, the black man, I mean, the white man and the black woman, okay, they'll have children. The white man and the white woman, they will have children. The man and the man and the woman and the woman, they won't have children on that island. You know what that strange children will be for the, for the church? That is a violation of what Paul said. Paul said a widow can marry, but she can only marry in the Lord. You have a Christian. Okay, let me put it this way. You have a Baptist who marries a Catholic. You have a Christian that marries an atheist. You have a Christian that marries 
a Mormon. That's a strange child. In the churches today, all are welcome. Bring your strange children in. And then wonder why the church is a mess. And this is strange. You, you may not know. I mean, like I said, they don't have antennas. Now shall a month devour them with their portions. 30 days. That's a Jewish month. Blow ye the coronet and give them, and the trumpet and Ramah. Cry aloud at the Beth Haven, and after thee, O Benjamin. There's a place where Isaiah says, Cry aloud, show my people their transgression. Ephraim shall be desolate, alone, broken, in the day of rebuke. Among the tribes of Israel, and they got ten of them, have I made known that which shall surely be. Listen, I have sent prophets into Israel. I have told them what's going to happen. I have tried to warn them. Like God sends street preachers. God sends Christians. God sends people with gospel tracts. God sends people with King James Bible. And we, and we don't give invite them to church or come to my church or, you know, how wonderful God is. Oh, I'm the light of the world. I am the salt of the world. And we give them that Jesus Christ suffered and died according to Scripture. He was buried and he rose again the third day according to Scripture. You must believe in that. You must put your faith in Jesus Christ. Because if you don't, you're going to die and go to hell. I don't care about your religion. I don't care about your baptism. I don't care about your grandma. I don't care about your money. I don't care about who you work for. It's by Jesus Christ alone. None of this. You come to church Sunday. I look at, and I'm not going to tell you, but I look at it. I look at the everyday the obituaries. The obituary page that I look at, they haven't even come up to the date. Of before the Saturday before Easter, because I always say, "Hey, you invite them to church Sunday. What if they die Saturday?" There's been so many obituaries they haven't even got to the Saturday. And I look at those names. Well, oh, I wonder if they were going to go to church Sunday, Easter. Didn't do no good. Well, I invited them to church. That's not preaching the gospel. That's not what you're not going to get a reward by. Come to a church. You're not warning them. And you don't want to speak up because you don't want to be hated. You don't want to be ostracized. The princes of Judah were like them that, re uh, that removed the bound. What has happened is Israel's sins have now come into Judah. And we studied Jeremiah. Like the, the like the church today, the Laodicean church aid, and that one church it, it means much merit. The, the Catholic Church is infiltrated. I've heard even preaching. Oh, we, if we could be as good as the Jehovah Witnesses of going out knocking on doors. Whoa, whoa. You mean the ones that don't believe that Jesus is God? You get in trouble. Therefore I will pour out my wrath upon them like water. That was at the end of Jeremiah. That was at the end of Second Chronicles. The Babylonian army came in and wiped it all out. Ephraim is oppressed and broken in judgment. Tell that to your Mormon friend. Get them to announce to Ephraim first. You say, well, how are you witnessing to, to a Mormon like that? You are showing a Mormon, hey, you're a sinner. You can't be saved if you're not a sinner. You know, the church thinks if we give you Tootsie Rolls, how great you are as a child. How, you know... How many times you walk down the altar? It's a show. I've been in churches. Oh, eyes closed, head bowed. My eyes ain't closed. Oh, yeah, I see that hand. I'm like, I don't see no hand. You liar. You are using deception 
to get people to, not because they care about you coming to the altar. Somebody's sitting there looking too. All right, that's one. Here's another one. And then your pastor goes to a pastor conference. I had 15 people walk the altar last week. All right, you know, if I was there, you know what I'm saying? Well, what, what, what did they want? Well, I have somebody else take care of that. You know, I asked brother and such and such. When, when somebody comes to the altar, you know, if they come up and come, you know, what are you doing, Pastor? You're just sitting there. One, two, you're counting the sheep. Uh huh. Listen, my college, where I got my degree and my doctor of divinity, taught me about the deception of them churches. Your college did not teach you that. They taught you how to deceive. There are colleges out there, Baptist colleges. You know, if you if you put a King James Bible in the pulpit, the people will be pleased. But you know, behind it, the ASB, the, you know, I've been trained. I've been trained untrained like you, because he willingly walked after the commandment. If you can show that Mormon he's a sinner, his church is a sin, like a Catholic, you can show that Catholic he's a sin, you can show him that his church is a sin in the Bible, now you've broken him from the church. Now you can deal with him as an individual. You got to get them out of that church. You got to get them out of the traditions. And if you get a Mormon or a Catholic to say a prayer and you haven't got them out of the church, that was just a prayer. Therefore will I be unto Ephraim a moth. They eat, they eat clothing. You know, you, you go in your closet, you pull out, oh, that dress, I remember that. I'm going to wear that dress to the park. And you pull out that dress and it's got, oh, they become Swiss cheese. And you look in your closet and there's a moth over there with a big old smile on his face. That's why you put mothballs or cedar. And to the house of Judah, that's down south, that's rottenness. You know what ended up in Judah? They, they became rotten, the fires, walls down. You learn about that in Nehemiah. When he goes to walking on it with his donkey or his ass, and he got to a point he couldn't even go any further. That's rottenness. When Ephraim saw his sickness, okay, so they are at a point, hey, you know what, I'm doing wrong, I'm doing something wrong here. And Judas saw his wound. You know what, I just drink too much alcohol. I'm ruining my family, and, you know, I'm, this is, Ruin my family. I'm ruining my body. Hey, that's good. Look at that. You know, uh, smoking. Uh, I got to quit smoking. It's not good for me. Not good for my family. Hey, you see something wrong. Uh, I, I got to stop being unfaithful to my spouse. Cause, uh, see, look, you see something's wrong. Okay. They went. Then went Ephraim to Assyria. This is the nation that's going to take Israel into captivity. This is Nineveh. And sent to King Jerob, that's a Syrian judge, uh, king, excuse me. Yet he could not heal you. Well, you know, I, I got such a great problem with alcohol. I'm going to go to AA. And AA will teach you, you will always be a, an alcoholic. I don't know how they say it, but that's, that's what I've been told. Well, if you come to Jesus, the nurse asked me today, you know, do you drink? I said, nope, I gave that up in, the uh, in 1991 when I married my wife. She said, you, you, you smoke? I said, I smoked from the time I was, I was, I was a freshman in high school, first day. Until the late 1990s, Jesus gave me victory. You go to a smoking clinic, you know, you, know, you may still have to, you may have to get, oh, what's those stupid things? Those, those vent 
Viper, whatever they call them. Where is the cure? There is none in the world. You know, and uh, unfaithful to myself. You can go to a marriage counselor. How do you know that marriage counselor ain't being unfaithful to his family? How do you know that your shrink, your psychiatrist, is not going to his psychiatrist because you are making him crazy? Nor cure you of your wound. You see, what you're doing is you're going to another man. You are a Catholic. You are going that little booth, and you're telling that sinner your sins. That doesn't relieve you of your sins. Matter of fact, you have added the sin by trusting a man with your sins and not God. When God says, oh boy, if you confess your sins, he's faithful and just to forgive you and cleanse you of your unrighteousness. I know back in the old testament. That's the old testament. We've got to bring it to the new testament. You know what America did with with COVID? We go to Pfizer's. We I don't know who made my shot. Uh, whatever. We went to the pharmaceuticals. And you know they're declaring victory on COVID, but COVID's still here. They just declared the vice president of the United States has COVID. Well, why are they saying that you can take off your mask? You can't take off your mask. You're going to need a fifth shot. <laughs> They're all confused like Hosea. And so uh, you worry about COVID? No, if I get COVID, I'm going to get sick and I will get better. I'm, if I don't get better, if I die, I'm going home to Jesus. I'm going to be cured no matter what. Put my faith and trust in Jesus. How do you know that? I don't wear a mask during the day. I don't wear a mask in the car when I'm all by myself. I don't wear a mask when I'm walking down the road. I don't wear a mask when I'm in the grocery store. Now, if I come to a place and say, sir, you got to have a mask to be in here. My doctor's office says that. They hand me a mask. I don't wear it. And I ain't going to put it on until they say, hey, you got you must put it on. I ain't worried about COVID. My daughter had tested positive for COVID. I stayed home, not because I feared COVID, because COVID, you can have it, not know it, and you could pass it on to somebody. I stay home. You know what? I don't want anybody else to have it. I don't want to make you sick, but I went to God. You say, well, they went to King Jared. That's He's not even a doctor. And you couldn't go to God. Why? Because God said, I ain't going to listen to you. You're in trouble. you got an incurable disease, a cancer. God said, go to the doctor. Said, Give me chemotherapy? That ain't going to work. Give me radiation? You're beyond that. There was a king, Jeroboam. He sent his wife to the to the prophet that spoke to him. And the prophet's like, hey, lady, when you get home and you cross that threshold, your baby's going to die. And the only reason that baby's going to die is because he's the only good one out of the nation. I'm going to deal with your family. What if I go to a doctor? King Asa, he was diseased in the feet. He went to doctors. He didn't went to God. You know what some Christians do today? They go to the faith healer. He ain't going to do nothing for you. You may anger God. Now, there are some that, that believe God, they love God, and they are in so much pain there, so they will try a faith healer just to be relieved. You can't underestimate the power of pain. If you got pain, you're going to try anything, but you're going to go to God first. But uh, Ephraim and Israel has got to the point, they're not even going to God. If they did go to God, we read, God is not going to listen to you. You are in trouble. Okay? Couple Last year, a couple years later, we went beyond Z for hurricanes. You know what most weather forecasters 
Mother Nature is in her theory. Mother Nature is angry. Mother Nature's moved that hurricane a little up the more, and it and it missed this area. And the hurry, Mother Nature said, "You didn't go to Father God." How come the Christians will go sunrise service on Easter morning, but the Christians won't lie on the beach when the hurricane's coming and get out there and pray? You're more interested in the Easter God, the Etzkar God, the booby God, than you're the almighty, holy God of weather. Uh, and, and you, oh, you know, all prayer. Prayer can be anything. You can pray. Prayer is your weapon. All right, here comes a big hurricane. Where are the Christians on the, on the beach? On their knees, praying to God, please move this thing. Where are the weather forecasters that praying? To, I like to say before I make the announcement for, for the weather in this area, which is going to be terrible, uh, and, you know, get down on his knees on the camera and say, everybody's watching, please, let's pray to the God of the Bible, let's pray to Jesus Christ that what I'm about to tell you, he will turn it off, he will turn it away, he will stop it. Please, I want to tell you that there's tornadoes and there's thunderstorms and all kinds of, of, of damaging. When's he going to get down to the knee call to God? Well, you know, people, it's El Nemo. That's not God. You know that L, E L, that's a God. Nemo's not your God. I dare you to go look it up. I'm not going to tell you. I've already looked it up. You know, you may get to the place. You know, they, they, they got a vaccine and thing for, for AIDS. If I read my Bible correct, and I think I do, I think there's an insect, some kind of weird insect coming when the church is going in the tribulation period, he's going to bite you. And you're going to wish you dropped dead. And you're going to go all the way atop the top of the tallest building in the world, Empire State Building, and the other build, Sears Building, and all that. And you're going to do the loveliest swan dive. And you're going to hit that road. And you're going to be hit in New York City by 5 million taxi cabs and 12 buses. And probably a whole bunch of people walk over you. And you're going to lay on that road and you're still not going to die. And you can call 911. You can call the paramedics. You can call the M. You can bring them to the most trauma center hospital. And you can have the 666. You ain't going to be cured. I will be unto Ephraim as a lion. Well, that's kind of particular because Jesus is the lion of the tribe of Judah. But this lion is, you know, he's hungry. You know, I read accounts. I read I read a book about lions. I forget it. I had to throw that book. I was having nightmares. And a doctor told me, and a pastor told me, both a doctor, get rid of that book. It was a good book. And, and, and a lot of the stories were true by people. He said, there's a man, that, they slept in the tent. And when he got up in the morning, his friend was gone. And I forget, there's a bone in your foot. I forget which one it was. That's the only thing that was left. And that one bone that is left on a human is the mark that that was a lion. You can go get water. You know, like, like the, and that one lion should be watching you, and you don't even know. They don't know God's watching. You can't say that they knew that God's coming when you you are told it's seven years, right? Well, when Jesus comes back in Revelation 19, he's on that, it says a name that no man knew. They don't even know who Jesus is. The world. You know, we're getting pretty close. We're getting pretty close to that in the Baptist church. I mean, we're to a point in the Baptist church today that you probably think Paul's a cucumber and Peter was a carrot or whatever the characters are. 
And I heard that, that and I didn't even bother looking at it, but what I've been told by reliable sources, that movie Noah made it, came out was absolutely, totally fraud compared to the Bible. And that movie by, uh, I can't think of his name now, the, the, the Patch, no, who is Jesus? I can't think of his name. Mel Gibson. Whatever that movie. I have been told that's a capital. You know, you know what, you know what Mel Gibson did with that movie. Every day of the set, he called priests and they had the mask. I heard that movie centered around Mary. And then I just read the other day about Mel Gibson that, that he is not so good to work with. He's very argumentative, very antsy as an actor, and that many people complain because he's anti-Semitic. Ooh. And you Catholics, you Baptists, you Catholic Baptists, you Baptist Catholics, oh, we're going to watch this movie. I had a Baptist tell me, you ought to watch the robe. You know what I learned the other day? And I, maybe the Catholic Church banned the robe. Maybe because it's Bible, I don't know. The As a young lion to the house of Judah. That means that, that lion has strength. He's young, he can run. I even will tear and go away. That's a Babylonian army. You remember one of those animals that Daniel talked about? Was a lion. And start paying attention to lions. You know Jesus Christ is a lion? You know who else is a lion? The devil. And you know Satan's waiting. He's at the throne of God, Job 1 and 2. He's waiting for God to say, all right, go get Judah. Go ahead, you have my permission to get Israel. And, and God's got to put a limit on him because if God didn't put a limit, Satan would tear them all to places. You don't believe me. Hold, withhold her womb so she can't have a baby. You remarkable how many Jewish women in the line of Jesus Christ, they were barren. Two of them said, well, here, take my maid. <laughs> oh, wow. No, take that back. Three of them. Yeah, yeah three. One for, for Samuel's mother, not in the line of Jesus. That woman that's at the temple, she is crying. She is agony because she's barren. I will take away and none shall rescue him. What, well, what happened in Jeremiah? What happened to Israel? What happened to the two and a half tribes on the other side of the Jordan? I will go and return to my place. Where is he today? Jesus has right hand of Father right now. What did they do? They rejected the Messiah. Two, they acknowledged their offense. There is coming a day near the end of the tribulation period. Those Jews are going to finally say. They're going to have to have the New Testament to know Jesus. And they're going to have to finally say they're going to have to get that red heifer. All right. Your anointed one was murdered. He was killed outside of Jerusalem. Book of Hebrews. Book of Hebrews. Hebrews in the tribulation period, they're going to have to acknowledge that they rejected it, and they have no idea who did it. What were the names of them to say crucified? They're not mentioned. Tradition. I don't care about tradition. Those Jews in the tribulation period are going to reach out to God, Jehovah, and say, all right, we believe. And then what happens when somebody today says, I believe, they get saved? What happens when those Jews as a nation comes up and says, we believe, they're in Sela Petra, and God turns to, all right, son, get on that horse, get your army, go get them. Look for that red string, the harlot. The look for the harlot. Go find a harlot. And save her family. Sound familiar, Joshua? Sound familiar, Jehovah saved? Sound familiar, Jesus? 
I don't read the Old Testament. Don't. You don't learn the Bible. Because Jesus is going to take that same route that Moses and Joshua did. And for those Jews, I wonder if there's going to come a time that when they enter that land, I wonder if they're going to enter, I think it's Gilgal, I forget what it is. It goes, all right, you guys got to be circumcised. You're Jews. Not only the flesh, but your heart. I'm going to give you a new heart. I'm going to give you a new spirit. I bet you, I, I think it's Gilgal. Check it out. I wonder that's where it's going to happen. All right, now let's go to the land. They're already in the land. Go into the land. I will go and return to my place. He's in heaven now. Do they acknowledge their offense and seek my face? Right now, God says, I'm hiding from you. Boy, by seven years in the tribulation period, they're looking for God. In their affliction, that's the tribulation. They will seek me early. And that's what Jesus said. That early is about after three and a half years. So that's after the Antichrist abomination desolation. When the image. That's early. To us, that's like, whoa, that's late. 